<clears throat> so I asked what's next. And he said more polishing. More polishing. <laughs> Episode 4, part 28. More polishing. There's a lot of polishing. I want to clean this guitar completely. Like, this is also quite dirty. And it's dirty and dusty enough. I'm just going to keep using this rag. I'm going to get it wet. How wet? Not very wet at all. I'm going to do the Bob Ross thing. I'm going to beat the devil out of it. Beating the devil out of the wet rag. It's just dust and grime. Dust and grime. Dust and grime. Got some clothespins in there. Don't worry about that. Yes, I'm going over what I just polished and stuff. And that is wet. There's still dirt. So I'm just going to use water as my solvent. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You think Johnny does this to his guitar? Did you do it to his guitar? This is exactly what I did to the Mean Mistreater and it's kind of the same condition as the Mean Mistreater. Mm. Episode 2, the Mean Mistreater. He had that guitar hiding in his house like behind a shelf. Hadn't played it in years and it was pretty similar problems, all this stuff. Still gross, gross, gross. I am gonna move on, find some clean spot on my cleanish rag. So I'm just gonna, it's a lot of awful, awful dirt, dust, like a thick layer of it. Dirt, 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 yeah. I'm definitely gonna dent this guitar. Oh well. I guess it's good, it's mine. Dent it? I just don't have the most greatest working condition oh, yeah. to so The tuning pegs are filthy on this guitar. Apparently the uh, Miracle cleaning cloth is good for that too, but there's just so much dirt. I think first the just wet rag to get most of it off. I'll be wasting my Miracle cleaning cloth. You can't just be growing on trees with Miracle cleaning cloth. Cleaning the guitar and cleaning the guitar and cleaning the guitar and we're cleaning the guitar. This is stuff you just can't get at when the strings are on the guitar. Watch out for your parts box. The parts box may go flying. That would be bad. I don't want that. I'm Bang, there it is. Here we can get some interesting shot of the back of this guy. So here's what I think I know. I think, I think that 1984, they wanted to go to this Explorer sock stretcher hockey stick style headstock. And they made like the one in the ad, the holy grail of the Kramer collectors, the uh, non-tilt back 
Berettas. And then they wanted that to be more like a tilt back, not like a Fender guitar. And I think this was the first attempt at a tilt back Explorer style headstock for Kramer. Made in the USA, in New Jersey, not that far from here. And they did that by using a joint here. So it's two different pieces of wood. One piece of wood is the headstock. And then this piece of wood is the rest of the neck. That's pretty strange. Uh-huh. I don't think that was popular with the customers at the time. And I think that made it kind of a, I don't know, I heard rumors, I guess, like you could call them about these ones. People call them, I think the guy that sold it to me called it a transitional headstock. Because yeah, they had the flat one, the non-tilt back sock stretcher. That peg's a little loose. Got some slightly loose pegs. Maybe not. Some difficult spots to clean guitar peg heads. So yeah, it's the sock stretcher. Transitional headstock. Then they got a totally different one a little after this. These like matching painted Berettas are, they've, it's shaped differently. It's kind of a stubbier, what came after, sort of a stubbier Kramer headstock. And the logos are a little different on those. I think they start, I don't think they say series anymore or something. Can't remember exactly. I love my Kramers, but I'm not super up on their lore. That's why this is what I think I know. What I think I might know. Huh. Okay. Eee. I'm deciding whether I need to do more back and forth. I think probably there's a little bit more back and forth to be done. First, we're going to take that apart. Are these normally longer? Is this going to be longer than your series with John? This is just the most boring. Watch a guy go back and forth, polish and polish. watching a guy polish his guitar. He's polishing <laughs> the guitar, he's cleaning this thing up. There's so much to clean up, it's so gross everywhere. It's a lot of cleaning up work. All right, I gotta get Mr. Lambie Bar off, I think. I'm gonna build you a tripod. But we need the close-up shots, like back and forth. Back and forth. It's still pretty, I don't know, like some kind of bit of waxy residue, I think, is kind of there. Maybe I, can I think that's just skin. Buff that out. I don't think so. I think it's actually skin. from that miracle cleaning cloth, this kind of waxy coating it's leaving. I don't think they're shiny enough. I think I might have to get a little more aggressive on the make them shiny part. Mm -hmm. I need a new camera person. Need a new camera person? The camera person's giving up. Okay, 
now we're going to take off the back. I'm going to take off this cover. Parts in your part box? Parts in the parts box. Parts always in the parts box. Put them in order. My goal is later to put the same screws back in the same holes. That's pretty uh, weirdly detailed, I know. Hagar deserves it, man. Hagar's had these screws in there for a long time, since 1984, I think. Vintage Kramer. Vintage Kramer is where I learned all about Kramer. So. All right, I'm going to take the springs off, and the Floyd Rose trim is just going to fall right out. Gonna grab it, unhook it, grab it, unhook it, and grab it. Oop. Super dangerous this working on guitars thing. Unhook it. Pinch myself a little. So yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah, this trim claw is driven all the way in. That's because I used to have big strings on this thing, but I'm going to have much skinnier strings on this thing when I put it back together. Much skinnier strings. All right, the trim springs. I don't think I care if those go back in order. And there's our clothes pins and our trim. guy's loose. Just that right there. There's that bushing broken. Is that right? Is that the way it goes? I don't, re I don't remember how it goes. I bet you can't hear me mumbling at all. But I am just going to tighten it up. Does that need cleaning too? It does. It's pretty dirty. Don't know if I want to go that deep on it, though. I don't think I, I want to watch you do that. No, this is this is another huge pile of work cleaning this thing. Floyd Rose cleaning. Look how much this little bit of miracle cleaning cloth brings her back, though. Let's do some little little bit of cleaning. Almost do just want to rip it right down, clean it all up, clean it all up, clean it all up. I want to clean it all up. It's oxidized steel. What's going on? It's just dirt and grease is what it is. It's dirt and grease. Dust. Somehow even in that sealed cavity got in there. Grease from everywhere. Will this make it sound better? Probably not. Okay. No, it isn't all going to come apart, I think. I'm going to just have to do that. Okay. We're going to clean it. We're going to clean it, right? Should we start a new segment? <laughs> I'm going to take a break at this point and go on to Floyd Rose cleaning.